Hello, everybody. Let me get my notes. Hello. Um, I'm Max Zolan, also known as uh, Russian Cat Food Online, or RCF for short, and I'm um, the, uh, the founder of the Voron Project. Um, before I begin, I want to extend a humongous thank you to the Sanjay, um, Sanjay Mortimar Foundation for organizing this amazing event. Um, uh, let's just give one more round of applause for the amazing team for setting all of this up. Yeah. It is going to be an event to remember for sure. Um, I also want to give a humongous thanks to E3D for helping us uh, get our giant bird across the pond and hosting it for us while we wrenched on it. Um, so thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. So this is uh, going to be a story about a 3D printer. Uh, it's, a, it's going to be a story about 3D printer that almost broke me. Uh, it's a story that, of a printer that ended my company, as we know it. And it's also the story of the printer that started Warren Design, effectively. So it is a, a very pivotal machine in the history of Warren. Um, it started its life in, back in 2016. Um, I started development on Voron 2 line of printers and was approached to develop a large-scale machine for more industrial applications. Um, the requirements for this machine were the built blade of at least 24 by 24 inches, which is 610 by 610 millimeters for everybody living outside of North America. Um, it had to have dual extrusion and it had to basically be able to support industri industrial scale production of parts. Um, I saw this as an opportunity for MZBot at the time to enter industrial market. Um, so I jumped on it and started designing the machine. Um, so dual extrusion was actually done because we are in 2016 land. Dual extrusion was done via E3D Chimera, if anybody remembers that hot end. Um, they don't really sell those anymore, I don't believe, but it was, it was the easiest way at the time to get dual extrusion working. Um, I added an extra goal of having it be an all metal construction which was a departure from the current Vorons of the time, which were all three printed rep rep based machines, basically. Um, so, uh, Voron 24, which 24, the 24 inches, um, is actually an origin point for Voron 2, um, our flagship line of printers, basically. Uh, current iteration of that being Voron 2.4. Um, not to be confused with Warren 24, but yeah. Um, so the, that was the first machine to have quad gantry leveling, so four motors for gantry. Uh, flying gantry was actually developed for V24. Um, and it was developed in Marlin because Clipper wasn't a thing at the time. Um, so yeah, I got to work. Um, Voron 24 was in a lot of ways a Hail Mary for MZBot. Um, I knew after doing V1.0 kits of Voron's consumer market wasn't where I would get the best bang for the buck, if you will. Um, I was still working full time at my job um, and trying to raise a newborn child, basically. So I was trying to maximize my time and the return of the time so I can keep doing it. Um, because at the time I didn't see a way out of the, the conundrum I was in basically. Um, but I wanted to keep developing printers. Um, it, was, it was completed and delivered in 2017 on time. Um, however, it was at a great cost to my sanity. Uh, at, a, at a great cost to my family life. Um, and it really put me at a fork of the road. Um, there, there, there was a frank conversation with my wife that was had, that was basically said, you can try to pursue these dreams of having a 3D printer company. Um, we just can't do it here. Um, so you can quit your job and I will be 100% on board with you moving somewhere else other than San Francisco Bay Area, um, 
and you can do that full time or you can keep the current job that you currently have and basically shut down MZBot. In, um, and then come 2018, that decision was made fairly easy for me as 3D printer companies in the United States started folding one after another due to mostly market pressures from companies from China and just not able to compete on the market. Uh, me being a one-man company effectively, doing this in spare time at 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, the choice was fairly easy. Um, so with a heavy heart, I decided, okay, I'm going to close MZ1 and I'm going to wake awake from it. And honestly, at the time, I thought that was the end of it. Um, all of the R&D of, of MZBot was basically shifted over to being completely open source. Uh, we retained the logo. So MZBot logo is the Moron logo that you guys see. This. Um, if, you guys, um, if you guys ever wonder what it is, it's M and Z, my initials, and a hex. So I got to keep that. So, Voron project continued, um, and then it grew, and then it grew some more. Um, we needed a new masthead to organize ourselves under, so we created Voron Design, which is now known by a whole bunch of people. We have an army of talented engineers from all walks of life that contribute to our projects. Um, and Honestly, MZBot had to die for Voron to continue and succeed. And standing here today looking at all of the Voron shirts in the audience and all the Voron 3 printers here, um, I truly believe it was a worthy sacrifice to make. Which brings us to the giant machine sitting in that hall. Um, as some of you have guessed from this, the title of the speech, um, the name that we've chosen for this machine is Phoenix. Um, and now that you know the backstory of it, the, hopefully the name makes a little more sense. It is a rebirth of V24. We did, um, for uh, our MRF, uh, we did a, a redesign, complete redesign of the machine um, as a proof of concept. It was a test bed to kind of figure out what we can do for something a little more ambitious. And that something a little more ambitious is sitting in that hall. It is an IDEX printer. It's based heavily on uh, Tridex, which is a Voron community project. Um, it supports, it runs Clipper, obviously. Um, and it supports mirror and duplication. So ideally speaking, if you wanted to, you could have two 300 by 600 printers running simultaneously printing parts. It has four heated beds that we bring up sequentially so as to not blow the power breakers because uh, I believe the total combined wattage of the beds is 2,600 uh, watts. I haven't calculated yet. Also, I don't know what the wattage of the LDO heaters is on that machine. Um, really, the paradigm shift this year versus 2016 is the amount of manufacturers we have that are willing to work with us uh, or actively approaching us to like, can we help you guys because you're awesome. And that has made really experience of getting into Voron a whole lot easier. We have an entire army of vendors and manufacturers that are there to support our community. And that is incredible incredibly helpful to keep this community alive and keeping the printers alive. Because you can actually get more on parts now on Amazon, which was not a thing I would have imagined in 2016. Um, I want to call out some of the people that have contributed to the success of that machine in particular. Uh, first of all, Mandala Roseworks in the United States did all the aluminum machining on it, especially that beautiful front plate on the top that you see. Uh, Victory Tech kind of stuck with a no compromises theme and designed a custom controller board for us. Um, it is a humongous thing uh, that you have to see. 
at the back of the machine. Uh, we also have a sample on, uh, on, on the Voron um, tables over there if you want to look at it. They also are providing the toolhead boards because the whole setup is CAN bus. Um, I want to call out LDO for providing um, all the NEMA 23 motors for us, specifically the custom motors that they built for us for X, um, X axis and providing the heated beds. Uh, Fabrica, which is a US based vendor, provided the linear motion, the bearings, and the humongous uh, 610 six by 610 uh, spring steel sheet. Um, it's, it's huge. And, um, and E3D for the Revo Voron high flows, which come in very handy on that machine. Um, I think everybody is wondering when we're going to actually release the thing. Um, I've certainly got DMs about, hey, it's December. W where's the printer? Um, you, you may not know this, but the uh, Voron release process is a bit of a pipeline. Um, and in the progress of the pipeline, we're about here. Uh, we still need to clean up the CAD, which is part of the release package. Uh, the manual does not exist, which is also part of the release package. Uh, we need to clean up the bill of materials, which we do have at this point. But again, we're not a company, so our release is more of a, here's all the things you need to do to build it. Um, if we can get manufacturers on board at the same time to be able to release the parts that you can buy, great. Otherwise, you might be self-sourcing things for a while. That's just the boring way of life. Um, but we are currently targeting the beginning of 2024, so next year, for an actual release of Phoenix. Um, we underestimated the development time. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically take a V24 that you built for Remurf and make it IDEX. How hard can it be? Well, uh, it, was, it was very hard. Um, it, when you step into unknown territory and uncharted waters, waters of clipper code and um, CAN bus topology, and when you start re you know, reading through ISO documentation on CAN bus and trying to figure out what it is actually happening on your machine, you realize that, oh, it's, I, I think we've bitten off a lot more than we can chew, but we do have to chew on it at this point because we're committed to it. Um, and that really is the, what drives the Voron projects. We are phonetically committed to making sure that whatever we're building or prototyping gets done. Um, and with more than engineers than just me, uh, we're able to do that because somebody else can, you know, life happens. Again, this is all volunteer effort. Um, they can walk away and somebody else can pick up and carry the flag effectively for them. Um, until they can come back and you know push the project to the end. Um, and honestly, most of us are neurodivergent, I believe, um, because we are all super obsessive about tinkering on morons. Um, it's a self-selected community, I believe. So it um, it helps to be in a company of friends, I guess. Uh, if you have any questions about Voron or the machine that's parked over there, please feel free to come on by and say hi, and uh, we're, we'll answer any and all questions you guys have. And uh, thank you so much for uh, hosting us. Thanks. <laughs>